Okay, there's the yoke. The apparatus out there on the clover leaves is disconnected. I'm going to connect up this one and turn the wheel on. And for anyone that isn't convinced that Ed's wheel piloted a rock, well, I won't say cutting, but whatever, I think it cut. And I think it definitely chipped, because I think that's really what it was. And away we go. There's the relay. There's the wheel PMA. There's the little relay thing. And that's even a little fast. <laughs> a little too fast now. Anyway, you get the idea. Plus, I get this drag off of there. I got a lot of tuning to do. As you can tell, all this stuff is pretty rough. But it works. I mean, if that had a wire going, which I'm working on right here, for another part of it, I'm going to cut my soapstone. Whoop. Wire fell off. And the spring fell off. As an addendum, that's the spring that fell off the little relay, and then I had the wire connected, and it overheated this coil, which is just a demonstration coil, and it burned up, which will force me to wind some better wire on the yoke, and actually try to chip maybe this soapstone, which I'm hoping is similar to oolite or limestone or whatever. I could go for a nice big chunk of limestone here right now. Over and out. Hi folks, Scott here. Alright, there's the yoke suspended with a rope on this end and an actual homemade block and tackle on that end. From an old exercise machine, pulleys and all. And I tapped a chisel out. Piece of crap soft, very soft chisel, but it's heavy enough. I mean, that's a small little demonstration hammer. And I'm going to turn it on and see what happens. Wheel and all. What a mess. But here we go. Hope you enjoy.
I need a better relay, obviously. I'm going to try to film this and hold the relay for better adjustment. My relay is a little rough. I'm holding it to get it to probably messed it up. Yeah. Anyway, let's shut things off and examine the damage. So that was a fresh cement floor a few minutes ago, and this is concrete, and that chisel is soft, and that wheel is all whacked out, as you can tell, but it's starting to chip. I've got some winding issues, as you can see. I'm still using the recycled wire that came from an old battery charger and so I need to wind some sweet 16 that kind of wire good magnet wire and see that's that aluminum this is aluminum wire and I pulled it off so who knows if they're shorts it seems to work but anyway what you just saw was pretty much how Ed chipped a lot of the stone only with a much bigger unit, even bigger than that one, which I'm going to demonstrate next, because this one here I don't really like. It's just not, never meant to be chipping, <laughs> and the damn thing chips. Over and out, more to come. All right, there's the culprit. Pretty hot, because there's not enough wire. I think this is like number 12 aluminum. <laughs> So that's pretty low resistance. I'm going to put a lot more on it and wrap it with the old Sweet 16 copper. And I should get a good snap like you saw before. Before this coil burned up. As you can see, I'm burning them right up. Alright, over and out. More to come. Alright, we'll continue where we left off. I uh, wound the coil almost full this time with the copper, number 16, or 15 actually, and I'll start the wheel here. This is the relay switch, makes that go boing, if you can see that. So that means it's on, and there's the PMH, and now the wheel's going. And this turns on the hammer affair. And so the difference between an Ingersoll Rand, where you have to hold it and vibrate yourself to death, is that this sits there and does it by itself. But again, this is a demonstration hammer. that I built just to show what solenoids can do. And it actually does something. So that's kind of cool. But again, I'll get something big like this and even bigger like Ed had.
gonna go over and check my relay. He's working, but who knows? Yeah, that's quite a bit of flash off of that relay. I really need, or uh, that's not even a relay. That's a reed switch kind of thing with a magnet banging it. That should go to a relay. And I don't have any power on right now. No generators running anything. And it had a grinder down there. I can see why now. hard concrete still going that one's not getting hot so that's a bonus I need a real coil though a really good solid wham not bad for a piece of threaded rod with a channel nut, a couple of car brake springs, or whatever they are, and the end of an old ice pick, I think. And a bunch of garbage. if the speed would help a little. Maybe not. No, slower is better. Oh, that was a relay. Yeah, rough. Needs adjustments. I'm sure it took Ed quite a few months or so before he got everything tuned up where it just kept going indefinitely. And the batteries are probably getting weaker. The one for the hammer. Yeah, I gotta work some things out. Let's get the idea. Alright, I'm gonna shut it off and clean some stuff up, I guess. Over and out. Okay. Late at night here. I've rolled my coil up. And I got it to work okay, and I found out that these reed switches either have a act, direct acting or reverse acting, where when the magnet pulls it forward, it can either break a contact or make a contact. And I swapped the action, adjusted the spring tension, <laughs> precariously hanging again. Anyway, turn it on. Watch it fizz. Do a little spin like it has to have. Hit the switch here.
it's actually sliding on threaded rod or all thread not a smooth rod so once in a while it gets caught until it wears out okay gotta find out why that's doing that Has <laughs> character, doesn't it? Whatever. I'll leave it be. This thing has a mind of its own. I don't like this hammer is it's only pulling on a three-quarter inch shaft and I got it set a little low and so it doesn't seem to have the permeability saturation situation imbalance there's an imbalance it's not imbalance but anyway it's still chipping for what it's worth, I like it with the light on. That relay's been good and reliable so far. A little grease is all it took. That's going directly to the hammer. If I get a bigger coil, I'm going to need a relay in between or I'm going to burn those contacts up. Probably maxing them out now. Well, there's the yoke setting sideways from the other angle. Two o'clock in the morning. I just ran this thing for 10, 15 minutes and I chopped that. So I'll turn it on real quick and run it one more time. like the original Ingersoll Rand. Get the resonance going on the wire spools. Uh -huh. And there's the gizmo running here, of course. This thing runs quite a while. So 
So far I've got that coil up to 15 minutes, like I say. Pretty good because the batteries just ran it for 15 minutes, like I said, so it's holding up okay even. And I don't have a generator charging them. I do have a small charger on them. It's just the wheel hiccups once in a while. But the batteries probably are getting weak. I don't know. Maybe the contacts get sticky or something when they warm up. Now it's picking up. Damn thing. Over and out.
All right, before I close, machine's all torn down. That's what I ended up doing. I don't know if you can see how deep those are. They're fairly deep relief cuts, at least the <laughs> what look like eyeballs are. Anyway. And yes, just to close, there's the mash fan. My garage is a sight to behold. That's all I can say. Yes, I can maneuver around in this place, but I got stuff hanging everywhere. Just because it's a small little structure. Okay, signing off for sure this time.